Minor Goldfields has swung to a quarterly profit, turning around uh, a loss in the previous quarter as production climbed up by 10% and costs dropped by 9%. Joining us now to unpack the numbers is company chief executive Nick Holland. Nick, judging by the uh, numbers that you published this morning, it's uh, been an interesting quarter for you, managing to uh, change things. How did you do it? Well, certainly it's been a strong operational performance from all of the operations. Getting up close to 500,000 ounces for the quarter was certainly uh, beyond our guidance in terms of production. And really all of our operations have performed well this quarter. We've seen increases in production in Australia, in South Africa and in Peru, a steady production performance in Australia. And as you can see, we've dropped our all-in cost by 23%. That's the important number. That's come down 23% to $1,000.89. And with talk of miners not making money at a 1300 gold price, we've now finally been able to uh, reset the cost base and set ourselves up to be sustainable at a 1300 price or even a lower price than that. So there's been a lot of work behind the scenes, a lot of restructuring. Uh, we've lost a lot of good people, unfortunately, across the, the global operations. But I think we're now at a situation where I feel that we can now uh, weather the storm, even if gold prices go lower for a little while. Gold prices going lower for a little while, how low will they need to go before um, trouble sets? Well, I think it's possible that gold could drop another $100 or so uh, for, for a short period of time. I don't think it's sustainable because if you look at the demand that's coming out of the East, it's becoming the mainstay of demand for the uh, global industry. Uh, China has now surpassed new records. Uh, India continues to be a strong consumer. And even though ETFs in the gold sector have been sold off quite aggressively, mm. if you go and analyze the numbers, you'll find all of that's been taken up by China and to a lesser extent India. So uh, that bodes well, I think, for the future. I am bullish on the long-term gold price, but I do think we're going to have to be patient for the next couple of years. And that's not all bad because it will help the gold industry uh, to clean itself up and be much stronger when it comes through the other side of this. How much more cleaning do you have to do? You've managed to cut down costs to a level that which you mentioned is sustainable, mm -hmm. but how much more cleaning needs to take place? Well, we've just broken up our growth and international projects division, which in 2012 spent $280 million. This year it's down to just over half of that, but next year that will be down even to lower than half of that again. So you don't see the full impact of that in these results because a lot of the exploration and evaluation costs are expenses we incur them. But you'll see the, the benefits of that coming through in quarter four and also in quarter one next year. I would like us to look at this opportunity to make sure that we can stay within a reasonable range of these costs and continue to absorb inflation. It's actually staggering to say, but we're now at a cost base that is lower than what we were in 2011 and only marginally higher than what we were in 2010 if you look at our old NCE basis, which is all capital we spend and all operating costs. And that's against the backdrop of an industry that's had uh, cost increases of anywhere between 10 and 15 percent per annum. So it's not been easy, mm -hmm. but I'm pleased that we've been able to absorb that. So clearly you've got the wheels turning in the right direction, but looking at one of your South African assets, Sibanya Gold, uh, th they've obviously managed to reach some success, beating you over the last year, I think by 57 percentage points. Do you regret that decision? I'm delighted for them, because let's go back to the strategy. Mm. We said to our shareholders, what we're going to do for you is we're going to give you two pieces of paper in exchange for one piece of paper. We're going to give you a new gold fields, which is excluding Sibanya, and we're going to give you Sibanya. And we believe that we can create additional value for you by holding those two pieces of paper. And the fact that Sabanya has performed so well over the, uh, the last few months, I never doubted it. Uh, I always thought the management team would make sure they turn those assets around. And that was the whole idea, is to liberate the management team and make sure that they can turn those assets to account. So long may it continue. That was the rationale. And from a Goldfields perspective, you're seeing now that our costs are getting down to uh, the lowest quartile in the industry. And uh, together with Sabanya achieving that, I think that bodes well for shareholders into the future. So I'm very pleased. Mm. Another one of your South African assets, South Deep, is one that you decided to keep on. Why not sell that off as well or unbundle it uh, to join a company like Sabanya? It's a very different asset. First of all, it's a mechanized operation, whereas the Sabanya assets are conventional uh, labor-intensive narrow reef mines. 
And the other thing is it's a growth asset. We think that this mine is going to be here for many, many years. It's a mechanized operation. And just to show you the leverage of this particular operation, we managed to increase our production this quarter by about 5%. But as a consequence of that, we dropped the cost by over $300 per ounce, the all-in costs, to uh, $1,599. And we're edging closer and closer to break even as the trajectory increases. So all of the, the signs on South Deep are pointing in the right direction. Um, I wish it could be quicker, mm -hmm. as would all of the analysts and the shareholders, but we're pushing very hard to continue the momentum on South Deep. The mechanization at South Deep, does that not pose a threat to uh, the labor that you might have there currently? It's a very different kind of operation because it's a thick reef package of about 20 to 30 meters that we mine. It's always been a uh, mechanized operation. And we only have 4,000 employees at South Deep. And that really is the, is the secret, is that we've got 4,000 well-skilled employees. That's the key, well-skilled. And uh, I think if you look at the benefits they get in working for a mechanized operation, it's, it's pretty safe. Uh, it's state-of-the-art technology that we use. And I think that's where you have to position mining. You've got to position your company today for what you see in five years' time. Mm -hmm. And mining in five years' time is going to be fundamentally different across the globe from what it is today. We're positioning for the future. Positioning for the future, uh, but coming back to the South Deep Mine, we know that that is uh, one of your assets that is currently uh, in, involved in the investigation regarding your uh, black economic empowerment deal. Uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission has, uh, is, is, is investigating that situation. When could we hear details regarding that? I can't comment on that uh, particular investigation, as you can imagine, given the fact that it is an SEC investigation. Um, it's prudent at this time for us not to comment. Has so it I'm had an, a negative impact on, on the company's image and maybe operations going forward? Uh, I can't comment further at this stage. Thank you. Well, Mr. Holland, let's uh, take a look at your Ghana operations. Then I understand that they're unprofitable and you're looking to make a decision regarding this. Uh, what's the situation with Ghana at the moment? In fact, the, the Ghana operations are profitable. Uh, they're making good cash. Tarqua is one of the flagship mines in our group and produces about 75% of our production in Ghana. An excellent operation, world class, making good money. The operation I think you're referring to is Demang, mm. which uh, has come to the end of its life of the original pit. And we're now looking to take an eight million ounce resource and see how we can configure that into a profitable mine. We're doing a lot of work and I hope to be able to give an update to the market in February next year, but we're still reasonably optimistic that we can make it work. On uh, the labor disputes that you are uh, facing naturally in the country, we know that that's something that affects uh, a lot of mining companies in South Africa. When could we see, as mentioned by one of our mar market commentators earlier, when, we, when could we see some kind of negotiations that take place uh, providing certainty for the next three to five years? Well, I'm very pleased that we've been able to conclude a two-year wage deal in August. And uh, certainly I think it was a, a good demonstration of collective bargaining working in the gold industry where all of the gold companies work together collaboratively and also work collaboratively with the National Union of Mine Workers and other unions. And I think we concluded a win-win uh, agreement and I think it was very responsible from all parties in the aftermath of what we went through in the latter stages of 2012. So I think we've got security and certainty now for the next two years and it's up to us to try and work together to improve those relations. I think by government, by organized labor and business, working together collaboratively in the future, we can grow the mining pie in this country, and that's what we need to do. But isn't that the problem there exactly, that uh, we want to work together, we talk about working together, but it's just not happening? I think it's happening in pockets. There are pockets of excellence, but we need to almost uh, force all the parties just to lock themselves in a room for uh, three or four days, all of the key decision makers, and uh, come out with a statement of intent uh, with time frames as to what we want to do. From our side, Goldfields is prepared to participate, and uh, we look forward to the date and the time and the venue where that happens. Nick, I can't let you go without asking this, but you hit up a rather difficult operation. Why stay at the helm? I love this job, and I enjoy what I do. And uh, someone asked me this morning, uh, what makes you get out of bed in the morning? I think being able to turn around the company uh, in the face of declining prices to drop our costs by three to four hundred dollars per ounce when people didn't think it was possible. Mm. I think all of that has come through this quarter. Um, now we need to build on this. Uh, 
and look how we can create an exciting company for the future. And, and that's what gets us out of bed in the morning. Well, all the best. Looking forward to your next quarter's results. That was uh, Nick Holland, Chief Executive of Goldfield.